Hello on Fulbrusen, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss one of the bigger mysteries when it comes to colliding black holes discovered in the last few years. And specifically discoveries in regards to the types of black holes that seem to be produced and seem to be colliding. Because here, over the years, researchers discovered that something doesn't actually add up. And it doesn't add up when it comes to the masses of these black holes, and based on what scientists previously predicted, should be happening when these black holes collide. And so let's talk about some of the recent studies on this topic and possible resolutions on what seems to be happening out there in the universe. And here let's start with the definition of different types of black holes. Now the most common type of black hole is of course the supermassive black hole. Massive giant objects visible from very far away very often millions or even billions solar masses. And because they are so massive they are usually very easy to see but most of these have only been discovered in centers of various galaxies. There are some exceptions to this rule, including potentially rogue supermassive black holes, one of which was discussed recently in the video in the description, but for the most part we usually find these in galactic centers. With the second most common type of black holes being stellar mass black holes. And these are black holes anywhere from 3.5 to 50 solar masses in mass, and are basically produced as a result of various supernova. Now these are a lot more difficult to see, mostly because they are usually more or less quiet, like the one you see right here, but in some cases when these black holes start to absorb a lot of mass from some kind of a partner, that's when we usually can see them as well. In many cases these are called X-ray binaries. But the most elusive type of black holes is known as intermediate mass, something that's over 100 solar masses, but less than 100,000. And up until relatively recently, no examples of these black holes existed. These were basically extremely elusive. But based on the analysis of various globular clusters and certain smaller galaxies, researchers definitively discovered at least a few examples of black holes whose mass seems to be in thousands of solar masses. Once again, some of the videos here in the description talk about this a little bit more. But it's really the intermediate mass black holes that currently seem to be the most important in terms of scientific research, mostly because they represent a kind of a missing link when it comes to both black hole evolution and galactic evolution. By discovering more of these, we can actually understand how galaxies evolve and how smaller black holes transform into something much more massive. But one of the more unusual discoveries when it comes to these types of black holes was actually made back in 2019. This was the detection of gravitational waves, first seen on May 21st, 2019, by both the LIGO and Virgo facilities. And here this was unusual because it was basically two stellar mass black holes colliding to produce something that was almost definitely an intermediate mass black hole. A black hole whose total mass was approximately 142 solar masses. And though by itself this might not sound like something unusual and something strange, it was actually strange because of what was found to be colliding. And you can see these two black holes right here, one with a mass of 85 solar masses, the other with a mass of 66. And their collision produced something with a mass of 142. And in case you're wondering why the math here doesn't actually add up, or basically why 85 plus 66 does not equal 142, that's because they also released a lot of energy as gravitational waves. And so that was not really the mystery. The mystery was where exactly did these black holes come from or how did they form? Because current theories of black hole formations cannot possibly explain a pair of black holes with such an unusual mass. And so let's briefly discuss why. And all of this is really in regards to various types of supernova. Based on various models we have, we know that only certain types of supernova result in the production of black holes. Normally a supernova can either produce nothing, basically destroying the whole star, it can also produce a neutron star, or it can produce a black hole. And since only large stars can become supernova, it's only stars of certain mass that can then create black holes. Now the smallest possible supernova usually happens when the star is at least 10 solar masses. This though normally results in the production of a neutron star. Although not always as we've learned in some of the recent studies. Turns out that sometimes small black holes can also be produced. But anything between approximately 20 solar masses to 50 solar masses when it goes supernova will produce a black hole. And here the range of mass for these black holes is anywhere between 4 to maybe 50 solar masses. Or just to rephrase this, a black hole of 4 to 50 solar masses is the only type of a black hole that can be produced through a typical supernova. 
because something else happens when the star is a little bit more massive. In much more massive stars, they actually result in what's known as pair instability supernova. A supernova that produces so much antimatter inside that it basically destroys absolutely everything, leaving nothing behind. This also results in what's known as hypernova. This is mostly the result of extremely powerful gamma rays, resulting in the production of antimatter that then produces even more energy. Which is why black holes of over 50 solar masses are not expected to exist. Except for black holes that are even more massive. Because here, according to modern theories, stars with even more mass, approximately 300 solar masses or even larger, can actually create black holes too through what's known as direct collapse. And so here there's really no explosion, just a really massive star collapsing into a black hole once it becomes really old. And this is what we believe might have happened in the beginning of the universe, when a lot of really massive stars existed early on. Which is why researchers always believe that there should be quite a lot of these intermediate mass black holes everywhere, because a lot of these stars that collapse directly should have produced them in many different cases. But the main point here is that we should only see black holes anywhere from maybe 4 to 50 solar masses, or black holes over 120 solar masses. And there should be nothing in between. Today this is referred to as the black hole mass gap. Basically, there should be a type of black holes missing from the universe, or at least be extremely rare. And if we find black holes in this range, they must have formed as a result of a merger of smaller black holes below 50 solar masses. But there's a problem. When it comes to the universe, even though it is pretty old, it's not that old. And so it technically takes a very long time for black holes to spiral closer and closer together until they finally merge, forming something larger. And so even after 14 billion years, we don't actually expect any black hole pair to have collided more than once. Or in other words, we don't expect black holes with a mass of 50 to 120 solar masses to start colliding, forming intermediate mass black holes yet. And so now, going back to this image, you might finally see why this is kind of strange. Because that's exactly what's being observed here. We have these two mass gap black holes colliding to form an intermediate mass black hole. And since the only explanation for their existence is a previous collision billions of years ago, here something does not add up. The universe is just not old enough for both of these black holes to have merged, especially if each of them formed as a result of a merger as well. Which is why back in 2019, this created a bit of a mystery. A mystery that's still kind of unresolved. These second mergers cannot possibly exist within the lifetime of the cosmos. Most models today only predict one possible black hole collision within roughly about 14 billion years. And so for the past six years, a lot of studies tried to resolve this mystery. Maybe these black holes were actually formed by some kind of a weird supernova. Maybe there were some miscalculations or statistical anomalies. Or maybe these black holes formed in a very special environment where there are a lot of black hole collisions. And smaller black holes merge into larger black holes extremely frequently. Which surprisingly right now seems to be the best possible explanation. Well first let's actually discuss some of the recent evidence and some of the additional discoveries that sort of highlight how common this seems to be. First, well, let's start with this study right here. This is actually a series of studies released by Crystal Ruiz Rocha and the team you see below that focused on reanalysis of some of the older data from LIGO and Virgo, trying to figure out if maybe some of the other collisions or some of the other detections could have been somewhat similar, essentially producing intermediate mass black holes. And so this was mostly a reanalysis of some of the older data, with the main focus being establishing the total mass, the initial mass, but even the velocities of these black holes after the collision. And so here the focus was on discovering these light, intermediate mass black holes, or light IMBH. Black holes whose mass would be between 110 and 350 solar masses, and that would essentially be the result of collision of mass gap black holes. Black holes that should not be possible. And this data came from the observations between April 2019 and March 2020. And so by using machine learning combined with additional statistical analysis, they actually did discover a few exciting examples. For example, for 5 out of 11 signals, at least one of the original black holes was likely in this mass gap, or had a mass between 50 and 120 solar masses. With a few of these examples producing intermediate mass black holes that were not expected from these collisions. For example, one of these collisions, GW191223, 
seems to have produced the heaviest light intermediate black hole discovered so far. The total mass in this case was nearly 350 solar masses, which is even more massive than what we see right here. They also found another signal that was extremely far away, and a third signal that was relatively close, with the closest signal, JW191221, located at a distance of 760 million light years away from us. So obviously not too close, but pretty close for such a rare event. And the farthest collision was nearly 12 billion light years away. So it was actually surprising that it was even discovered. And so because now they've identified three more such unusual events, which were believed to be impossible previously, here this meant that we had to rework some of the previous assumptions on what we know about black hole collisions. Or at least work out exactly where this is happening, because here this just doesn't make sense. Not only are these black holes way too massive, they also seem to collide way more frequently. As a matter of fact, prior to LIGO's operation, scientists only expected to find a handful of collisions every single year. But these collisions seem to be way more frequent and involve black holes that don't make sense. And though this study does not provide any specific explanation, we do have an explanation from a separate study from just a few weeks back. The study on the star grinder. The star grinder in the galactic center. And this is actually something that was both hinted by previous studies that mostly looked at the spin of these black holes as they collide, and this recent study that explores everything in a little bit more detail. So what exactly is this star grinder? Well, in traditional models, when it comes to the central region around the supermassive black hole, such as the central molecular zone very close to Sagittarius A star, we basically expect this region to contain maybe 300 to 400 stellar mass black holes, from various massive stars that used to be here. Or essentially within about 5 light years away from the central black hole, we expect approximately 400 black holes to constantly spin and maybe collide. But the thing is, if it's only 300 to 400, we still don't actually expect to see so many collisions, even with all of the galaxies in the entire universe. So something here still doesn't add up, with this new study proposing something way more extreme. Not 300 to 400, but more like 100 million. 100 million stellar mass black holes in the region of approximately 4 light years away from a typical central black hole. And the explanation here is somewhat intriguing. None of this is based on observations of black holes, but it's actually based on the observations of different types of stars. And so from what scientists have seen so far coming from our own black hole, Sagittarius A star, we know that this region seems to contain almost no O-type stars the largest and the most massive stars that we usually expect in various molecular regions. Yet smaller B-type stars seem to be all over the place, which doesn't really make sense. And so because certain types of stars are missing here, to the researchers behind the study, this actually suggests that many of these stars are being actively destroyed by various black hole encounters. Something that doesn't affect smaller stars as much, but something that would most likely destroy larger, more massive stars, because they're just not as stable. And so the collision of these stars and various smaller black holes leaves this region depleted of certain types of stars and also creates additional anomalies that scientists have actually discovered in the last few years. One of the examples here is the S-type stars and G objects that we've discussed in some of the previous videos in the description. And so if this star grinder exists and if this region is filled with 100 million different black holes, it would actually suddenly explain pretty much everything. First of all, it would explain how these black holes are even possible. If there are 100 million solar mass black holes, they're going to be colliding all the time, eventually forming black holes in the mass gap and then forming intermediate mass black holes. They would then destroy certain types of large stars, preventing them from forming, which would explain why the central region seems to be devoid of them. And it would also explain the observations of various hypervelocity stars that seem to come from this region. In essence, solving a lot of different observations and a lot of different mysteries all at once. And right now this might be the best possible explanation. Explanation that suggests the central region doesn't just contain the supermassive black hole, it also contains up to 100 million solar mass black holes orbiting all over the place. The region scientists refer to as the star grinder. And this was potentially hinted by some of the discoveries from various galaxies as well, mostly based on the observations of the total velocity and the spin of colliding black holes, which did actually suggest they are orbiting and moving around some kind of a central, very massive object. Or at least that's the explanation 
for now, until future observations using gravitational waves, or until an even better gravitational wave detector becomes operational, such as LISA, we're probably not going to know much more. Mostly because detecting these black holes is already quite difficult, and trying to find these hidden black holes near the galactic center is currently impossible. But because this is the best possible explanation, it currently does make a lot of sense. And so, until future discoveries, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. You can find all of the relevant studies in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel Patreon where you can actually find quite a few additional videos and videos you might have not seen before, and of course, no ads. Or maybe join the channel membership, possibly buy the wonderful person t-shirt you can also find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye